All right. Well, it is 9.01 and we have Ian and Joan and Pam and Wendy. And I'm Kathy Hawthorne, who is your reader today for Morning Prayer Right 2 on Tuesday, October the 10th, 2023. So glad to have you here with us this morning. If you have friends who might like to listen later, you certainly can find it on uh, the good ship that org online uh, Facebook or uh, YouTube or on our our I'm having a mental block uh, on our web page. So this morning we are going to commemorate Vida Duncan Scudder who was uh, born in 61 in India and died in Wellesley, Massachusetts. She was an American writer, educator, and reformer whose social welfare work and activism were predicated on her social beliefs. Scudder was the daughter of a Congregationalist minister, missionary. In 1862, she and her widowed mother moved from India to the United States, settling in Boston. Scudder graduated from Smith College in 1884 and then studied Elizabethan literature for a year at the University of Oxford. In, 19, in 1887, she was appointed the instructor of English at Wellesley uh, before becoming full professor at Smith College, where they awarded her a master's degree. She was the companion of the Holy Cross, a semi-monistic group of about 50 Episcopalian women devoted to prayer and the accomplishment of social harmony. She was active in a number of social welfare organizations and helped fund the Decision House Settlement in Boston later that year. In 1903, she helped organize the Women's Trade Union League. Her support of this striking textile workers in Lawrence, Massachusetts led to widespread criticism, but Wellesley stood behind her. So she was a activists before we knew about activists and that is the lady that we will say a colic about this morning so let us begin grace to you and peace from god our father and from the lord jesus christ let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight O lord my strength and my redeemer Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us and forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Now let us say together our invitatory psalm, which is the Jubilate today. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are the people of, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. I think I went back to the old prayer book there. Faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. 
We have three Psalms this morning, Psalm 121, 122, and 123. We'll stop just briefly between each one. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where is my help to come. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over you and going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing where your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is in a unity within itself, to which the tribes go up and the tribes of the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper for you, you and may they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Psalm 123, to you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of the servants look to the hands of the masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hands of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of indulgence indulgent rich and of the derision of the proud glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever amen continuing with kings second kings chapter 22 verses 113 Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. He reigned for 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidiah, daughter of Abziah of Bozath. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of the father David. He did not turn aside to the right or to the left. In the 18th year of King Josiah, the king sent Shaphan, son of Azalah, son of Meshalem, the secretary of the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to the high priest, Hilakah, and have him count the entire sum of the money that has been brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the threshold have collected from the people. Let it be given into the hands of the workers who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Let them give it to the workers who are at the house of the Lord repairing the house. That is to the carpenters, to the builders, to the masons, and let them use it to buy timber and quarried stone to repair the house. <clears throat> but no account shall be asked from them for the money that is delivered into their hands, for they deal honestly. The high priest, Hilkiah, said to Shaphan, the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. When Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, he read it. Then Shaphan, the secretary, came to the king and reported to the king, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hands of the workers who have oversight of the house of the Lord. Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, The priest Hilkiah has given me a book. Shaphan then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded the priest, Hilkiah, Hapham, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the secretary, and the king's servants, Esha, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, 
for the people and all of Judah concerning the words of the book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our ancestors did not obey the words of his book and do, and do according to all that is written concerning us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord where he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth, and it will not return to me empty. That is that, but it will be accomplished for that which I have purposed. And prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson this morning is from 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 11, verses 12 through 17 and 17 to 22. I command you because you remember me in everything and maintain the tractions just as I handed them on to you. Now in the following instructions, I do not command you because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with when you come together as a church, I hear there are divisions among you and to some extent, I believe it. Indeed, there have to be fractions among you for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you become together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when this time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead and your own supper and one goes hungry and the other becomes a drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you Is in this matter I, if I do not commend you? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together, you are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels and all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and give help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. And now let us profess our thoughts in the words of the Apostles' Creeds. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern them and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we will never hope in vain. Our colleagues today begin with the colleague of the day, Proper 20. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our, our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ, our Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A colleague to commemorate Vida Dutton Scudder, educators, educator and witness for peace. Most gracious God, you sent your beloved God to preach, son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Raise up in your church witnesses who, after the example of your servant, Vida Dutton Scudder, stand firm in proclaiming the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A colic for grace. Lord God, almighty and ever-living Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by the adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A colic for the mission of Good Shepherd. Loving God, you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, that we might have hope of eternal life and that the Holy Spirit to sustain us in our faith in you. Give us grace to be the beacon of faith, hope, and love in this community, that we may radiate the transforming power of your love to everyone, everywhere, who live and reign together, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, Remembering today, especially the Diocese of Algoma, Canada, the Reverend Anne German Archbishop. We also pray for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and the Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and our Companion Diocese. Remembering today, especially the Diocese of the Dominican Republic, the Right Reverend Moses Quazada Moda Bishop. A prayer for mission. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially the most revered Michael B. Curry, Melissa, Marion, Ruth, Zan, Margaret, Ned, Lynn, and family, Jim, Fran, Melanie, Charlie, Dennis, Pam, Susie, and Tom. 
We pray for our incoming rector, the Re Reverend Dr. Sanford H. Goff, Jr., that he may for us be a faithful pa pastor who will care for us and equip us for our ministries. We pray also today for our Connect Ministries, remembering especially a taste of Good Shepherd that our members may come together to share, celebrate, and promote their mini ministries. And Bridge Club, the members of the Good Shepherd may gather to enjoy a fun and intellectual stimulating pastime. And now let us say together the Good Shepherd Parish Prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite your prayers of petition, intercession, or thanksgiving either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. And Ian asks that we pray for those who have died in the conflict in Israel and Gaza and for the safety of the hostages in Gaza. Oh, dear Lord, we so ask your prayers and we, we're we so confused that there can be so much hate in this world. Please, dear Lord, help these people to know and to feel your love and stop with the killing of all of these innocent people. We ask this, dear Lord, in your holy name. Amen. Thanksgiving for the confirmation of seven of our youth and five of our adults on Sunday. May they have grace to grow toward the full stance of Christ. Most definitely. It sounds to me like it was a fabulous experience. And I don't know why I'm not as smart as Wendy, because I could have watched it on TV too. Let us all stay together. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this love, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your services and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may you all have a lovely day and be kind to all of those you meet. I know that you are. That's just repeating what happens. So have a great day, you all, and we will be back tomorrow at 9 a.m.